Today, I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite islands, Langkawi. If you have ever thought of visiting Langkawi, then this video is for you. In this video, we'll break down the various ways on how to get to Langkawi, the cost, the accommodation, the food, and lots more. Langkawi is the hidden gem of Malaysia. Shh, don't tell anyone, okay? It's mouth-watering food, and it's a nature haven. And the best part? It is a duty-free island! Yay! Yay! Welcome back to our channel. We are Fran and John, and we are the Corporate Breakout Couple. We have just returned from Langkawi, and you can check out our video in the description below. In this video, we will provide course options for all of you. This is for my fellow Singaporeans, my fellow Malaysians, and our fellow international travellers. For our fellow pet lovers, we have something for you as well. We will break down all that you need to plan for a Langkawi trip, breaking down into cost categories and providing you multiple options along the way. We have done all the work for you, so just sit back and relax. Before that, please remember to smash the like buttons and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate the love. There are two ways to get to Langkawi Island, by sea or air. Flying to Langkawi is one of the fastest and straightforward route. So based on the three months advance booking and assuming you select an off-peak season, you can get very affordable prices. A domestic return flight from Penang to Langkawi by budget airline AirAsia will approximately cost you 70 to 80 ringgit. The flight time is around 40 minutes. If you're flying from further states such as Kuala Lumpur or Johor, you can expect another 20 to 40% in your fare price. For travelers outside of Malaysia, you might want to consider flying from Kuala Lumpur, Penang, or Singapore, as there are more international flights to these bigger cities. Now, if you are traveling by human ferry, which means no dogs allowed, from Kuala Perlis to Langkawi, the ferry ticket is around 70 ringgit. This is for a return trip. The duration is around 1 hour and 15 minutes. I'll share a link below on one of the companies that you might want to consider for the ferry ticket. Now for Roro Ferry, which is the route that we took, yes, dogs are allowed. For cars from Kuala Perlis, it costs 400 ringgit per car per driver. For any additional passenger, it will cost you 21 ringgit. And yes, dogs are free. It is a two hours drive from Penang Island to Kuala Perlis, half an hour for waiting time to board the ferry, and a 3 hours ferry ride. That's a total of 5.5 hours. By taking this route, you get to save money on renting a car and you get to drive in the comfort of your own car. You can enjoy the scenery along the way and get to make pit stops for yummy food. If you haven't watched our Langkawi video, I'll put a link below. You get to see how we make our way from Penang to Langkawi with our dog Snuffy. There are several ways to travel within Langkawi. If you intend to cover a lot of ground, I suggest that you rent a car. There are plenty of car rental agencies around and the pickup points are at the airport and the ferry terminal. For car rental, assuming you are making advance booking of two months in advance, for a local car such as a Perodua or a Proton, assuming it's a 1.5 liter capacity, you're looking at around 450 ringgit for three full days. Of course, the petrol is on your own cost. For petrol, an Octane 95 costs $2.05 ringgit per liter. A full tank should last you around 3 to 4 full days. For ride hailing options such as Grab, an off-peak, non-rainy weather, 30 minutes ride should cost you around 18 to 25 ringgit. For Fred and I, as you know, we took the Roro Ferry to bring our car over, so that handled our transport around the island. I love driving in Langkawi as the roads are very easy to navigate and the locals are very friendly on the road. No stress, no pressure. I truly enjoyed the laid-back experience with plenty of opportunities to enjoy the drive. You will be able to find all sorts of accommodation to cater to your various needs in Langkawi. Of course, hotel taste differs from person to person. Personally, we like modern hotels and villas at good locations. The four main areas to stay are Kua Town, Pantai Chenang, Tolok Datai and Tanjung Ru. Kua is the main town where the passenger ferry is located. There are lots of duty-free shops scattered all around and it's pretty convenient if you stay in Kwa. Pantai Chenang is where the most popular hangout spots are as most of the shops, eateries and hotels are located right at the beach. You will be able to find very cool resorts and hotels and lots of hipster cafes. Tolo Data is more exclusive as it is further away from the hustle and bustle and it is here that you can find luxurious resorts. Select Tolok Datai area if you're intending to make full use of the resort's facilities and connect back to nature and sip some delicious cocktails. 
Tanjung Ru is famous for its clean and pristine beaches and you will find several villas scattered along the area. Stay here for a laid-back vibe and experience some kampung life around you. For accommodation, I'm breaking down into three main categories for you. Budget, mid-tier and luxurious. For the budget category, I'm allocating up to 200 ringgit a night for room for two. For mid-tier, I'm allocating 300 to 700 ringgit. For luxurious, I'm allocating 1,000 and above per night. I'm providing you data from Booking.com, which is an online travel agency. My assumption is based on hotel rates for two months advance booking and off-peak season. As early retirees, we always snap up the best deals because we travel during off-peak seasons and on weekdays. Oftentimes, we are able to do early check-ins because there are no prior occupants to our rooms. Here's the cost breakdown. Budget of up to 200 RM per night. Here's a few suggestions you can consider in the budget category in various parts of Langkawi. Cloud 9 Holiday Cottages at Pantai Chenang, a rock resort Langkawi at Kwa Town, Chill Suites Langkawi also in Kwa. Now we come to the mid-tier category. This is a budget of RM300 to RM700 per night. A loft Langkawi Pantai Tengah located at Pantai Chenang, Holiday Villa Beach Resort and Spa Langkawi located also at Pantai Chenang, and Tanjung Ru Resort, located at Tanjung Ru. We're now at a luxury collection. This is a budget of RM1000 and above per night. Four Seasons Resort Langkawi, located at Tanjung Ru. The Datai Langkawi, located at Telok Datai. The St. Regis Langkawi, located at Kwa. For all dog lovers out there, these are the resorts that accept your furry friends. Four Seasons Resort Langkawi at Tanjung Ru. Bonton Resort at Pantai Chenang and Uluru Villa at Tanjung Ru. This is where we stayed. We have been to Langkawi numerous times and we stayed in many hotels and resorts. We hardly return to the same hotel twice because we want to soak in the offerings of each hotel. Uluru Villa was the first dog-friendly villa that we stayed in Langkawi. And we loved the space, the cool Santorini vibes at the patio area, and its close proximity to the beach. The food selection in Langkawi depends on your palate. There's an abundance of local cuisine such as Malay, Chinese and Indian. There are also many other cuisines such as Arabic, Turkish, Western and Thai. Fred and I love our Malay cuisine and Langkawi is the perfect place to get really awesome, authentic and affordable Malay food. For restaurant food, the budget is around RM300 to RM600 per pax, some of which are fine dining, the Gulai House at the Datai, Kayu Puti at the St. Regis, Ikan Ikan at Four Seasons Resort Langkawi. Now we take you to the hipster cafes and beach bars all located at Pantai Chenang and all serving mixed cuisines. The budget is around RM50 to RM150 per pax. Yellow Beach Cafe, Smiling Buffalo and Insteer which mostly serve cakes and drinks. Now we come to local joints serving local cuisines. They are abundantly available and very wallet friendly. The budget is around RM10 to RM30 per pax. The three must try places are Nasi Dagang Pak Malau, Boat Restaurant, you must try the Guinness Chicken, Restaurant Kat Yan Nasi Champor. Our apologies, the food is so so good we forgot to let the camera eat first. We found three extremely chill places to go where they welcome our furry friends. Imagine having a drink or two with your furry best friend by your side. This is what life is all about. Red Tomato, Bonton Resort, and Hidden Langkawi. Langkawi as a whole has many attractions. Here are my favourites. Sky Bridge and Cable Car. This is a must when in Langkawi. My friend who's afraid of heights endured the cable car ride for its amazing views. The experience of walking across the sky bridge with the wind whipping around your face and seeing the entire Langkawi spread all around you is one you must experience at least once in your life. Water sports. If you like water or being on the water like me, then Langkawi has a full suite of water sports to offer. From renting jet skis to going on a banana boat ride to renting an entire yacht with your friends, you can spend the entire day at sea. Telaga Tujo, which is Seven Wells Waterfall. If you love waterfalls and a good hike, this is an absolute must. The reward of being at the top of the falls, looking at a view and also soaking in the pools of water is a truly unforgettable experience. Kwa Town and Pantai Chenang. There are a few attractions at Kwa Town like Eagle Square where you can find a huge statue of an eagle right on the water's edge. 
Do pay a visit to the duty-free shops in Kwa, where you can stock up on snacks, drinks and alcohol at duty-free prices. You can spend the entire day at Pantai Chenang just chilling by the beach, sipping cocktails, having your meals overlooking the sea, or just browsing the numerous shops scattered all down the street. Here's our cost breakdown for you for 4 days and 3 nights in Langkawi. The cost of the Roro Ferry for to and fro was 421 ringgit. The petrol for 4 days and 3 nights, which includes the drive from Penang Island to Kuala Police and back, including all the tolls, for 50 litres of petrol cost 135 ringgit. For accommodation, for 3 nights in Uluru Villa, it cost 900 ringgit. For the food category, for local cuisine, we spend between 10 to 30 ringgit per person, and that amounts to 140 ringgit for the 4 days. For hipster cafes, which we went to 3 different ones for meals, it cost 75 ringgit per person. That amounts to 430 ringgit in total. For restaurants, unfortunately no pets allowed, so we couldn't go. For snacks, which we have our tea, our supper and coffee takeout, it cost 50 ringgit. So in total, we spent 620 ringgit for food. Under others category, we spent 40 ringgit for groceries and toiletries, and that includes some beer. That brings our 4 days 3 nights spent in Langkawi to a grand total of 2,116 ringgit. Langkawi is a great getaway for anyone looking for a short family holiday, an eating trip, a honeymoon, or even just a weekend escapade. We hope this sharing has been helpful and hopefully our paths will cross in Langkawi someday. See you!